Okay, my talk is nasal maxillary expansion and surgical consideration. Um, I have to obviously pay tribute to Christian. Um, I've lectured with him all over the world. Um, uh, that's one of the earlier, earlier lectures where, um, in Taiwan where I had no gray hair back then. So, um, but we miss him very much and we wouldn't be here without him. So, uh, but we'll carry on. Um, this, this slide is going to stir a few feathers. The, the goal of maxillary expansion is to enlarge the nasal airway with separation of the mid-palatal suture, and more accurately, lateralization of the lateral nasal wall. The maxillary expansion is just a byproduct, okay? Maxillary expansion, and the, the bottom line is improvement of nasal breathing. Maxillary expansion of the dental alveolar segment may improve the rest resting posture of the tongue during the day, but it does not improve nasal breathing, nor does it improve sleep apnea. So widening the jaw, lateralizing the dental alveolar segment does nothing. Dental devices, it doesn't matter how, how nicely you make a sound to try to, uh, when you apply it onto teeth of adults to quote unquote grow bone or widen the jaw will not improve sleep apnea or nasal breathing. It actually only hurts the patient. MARPI or MSE or whatever you want to call it, the expansion with SFOT without separation of the mid suture, again, does not improve sleep apnea or nasal breathing, which I see it day in and day out. Okay, now, let me validate what I've just said. The nose is the most resistive element of the airway, okay? We're obligatory nasal breathers when we're born. We want to breathe through our nose. Oral breathing is extremely inefficient. But if you cannot get enough air through your nose, you're, the, you're going to compensate by breathing through your mouth, okay? Then what's, that gonna, what's gonna happen? Your tongue's gonna retro displace, okay? And the, the tongue EMG has demonstrated that the tongue becomes more floppy. It's going to contribute to increased airway resistance and contribute to upper airway collapse when you breathe, constantly breathe through your mouth during, during sleep. And when you obstruct someone's nose in healthy volunteers, you could actually induce sleep apnea, both in men and women. Improvement of nasal airway reduces nasal resistance and can improve sleep apnea. It's been demonstrated in nasal surgery. It's been demonstrated in rapid palatal expansion uh, in pediatric population. Okay, I want to make that emphasis. Maxer expansion is going to render a less floppy collapsible airway. So maxer expansion directly improves nasal breathing but indirectly reduces the collapsibility of the airway during sleep. That's why it helps sleep apnea. Now, the last slide is that from Dr. Perali. Okay, so the work from Dr. Perali, it, the range was nine to 12 years old. Sleep apnea does not stop at age 12 or 13 or 14. It happens in all age group, okay? Just, uh, just a little bit of, so basically again, max expansion directly improves nasal breathing but indirectly lessens the collapsibility of the airway. That's how it improves sleep apnea. So, you can see that these patients are asleep. When we're asleep, there's neuromuscular relaxation. Contrary to what we like to think, the tongue is not at the spot. <laughs> it is not filling the palate. It doesn't matter what, how, why you make that dental alveolar segment, it is not doing a thing for you. Okay, I want to make that point. So you can see that you can make the palate as wide as you want, but it is not doing a thing during sleep. The key is to improve nasal breathing, improve the nasal airway. Uh, the, this couple slides are, uh, are given to me by Shannon Sullivan and Jeb Black. So basically, you know, we use, during PSGs, we don't usually directly analyze oral breathing. It's an inferred, okay? So, but you can see that the patient is snoring a bit, nasal breathing that, that changes to primarily oral, oral, uh, oral breathing and then converts to nasal breathing. And you can see snoring, you can see the arousal with increased respiratory effort, okay? We have to generate higher respiratory effort 
to create more inspiratory effort to breathe when you're, when you're breathing through your mouth. Again, nasal breathing good, mouth breathing bad, okay? And this is just a more of a repeated sort of nasal breathing, converts to oral breathing, increased respiratory effort, arousal. Now, I think the case is closed. Rapid max expansion in the pediatric population improves nasal breathing, improves sleep apnea. Case closed, okay? There's enough support for that in the literature. But I want to point to you in that the mean age is 7.6 years old, okay? Again, sleep apnea does not stop at that age. As we get older, as the patients get older, it's harder to expand, okay? It's hard to expand, especially the posterior aspect. Now people are using the MARP or MSE, but if you really look at the data critically, you're gonna see that mo we like to think that it's all skeletal, but primarily dental alveolar, again, okay? You don't have to look at me any differently, just look at the literature and look at some of your patients if that's what you're doing. This is a 22-year-old man, from the UK, actually, you could see that all it did with the MARP was basically cause a lot of damage without expansion skeletally. I see this day in and day out. This is a patient, 30-year-old woman that had MSE, fail, then had eight screws. I guess eight is better than four. Again, fail. I get this email. I get a lot of emails, unfortunately. 26-year-old man. Since 2019, the only treatment he had was MSE and face mask. I guess you could, you know, just because something works in the pediatric population doesn't mean that you could take it to the adult, okay? He had two MSEs. Maybe he's got in diasthma. I don't see any separation of the mid-palatal suture. That's why he's not sure how much it has helped him. It didn't help him. Another patient lives in New York, he's undergoing MSE, just received his braces, so I guess the treatment of MSE is done. Did it do anything? No. But the reason for this slide is that his current plan is to do MSE and then do MMA to move the jaw to a correct position. It, it, I hear that it just, we are not trying to treat someone to cephalometric norm. We are treating the patient's sleep apnea and airway. Okay, it, so just aside, just about MMA, which I, I've done years, you don't want to move the jaw three millimeters to quote unquote give this patient the correct position because it's not going to help the airway enough. It's just, uh, so anyways, now even when the MSC, so you can see that this patient, it looks like, okay, maybe the MSC has uh, expanded the, uh, the metapalatal suture but the patient has not, not improved. Why? Well, because this trough was created by the orthodontist <laughs> to try to expand the skeleton on this 26, 21, 22-year-old man, okay? Didn't do anything. Although, he was quote-unquote expanded because it moved the dental alveolar segment, okay? Now, what, what can we do? There's a SARPI, and if you add a few screws, you can rename it Dome. Whatever you want to use, that's fine. SARPI was developed to correct the crossbite. Surgically, I've been doing SARPI for over 20 years. I don't like the operation because it's unpredictable, because it's not, it is not an efficient way to expand the nose, because it's the nose that we're talking about, okay? If you are gonna expand the nose, you wanna be like the pediatric population to really expand the nose. You're not just trying to expand the dental alveolar segment. And the pattern of expansion in SARPI or DOME, which I think is worse, is all rotational. You're flaring out the dental alveolar segment, create a huge diastema, but not really focus at the nose, I published this paper a few years ago, and this is a talk I gave, I think, I think in Paris. Uh, because I was wondering why some of my SARP patients aren't doing, uh, didn't, so they, their nasal breathing is not improved, and their sleep apnea is not improved, yet they have a huge diasthma. I was so proud of myself, look at this huge diasthma. Then I look at the air, nasal airway. 
Well, you know, it kind of lateralized the segment a little bit. Certainly the patient had a huge diastema, but no opening of the, the, PN, the, the posterior nasal PNS. Uh, just a point about the PNS, which um, latest paper by Dr. Perali. Nasal max expansion, if you do it correctly, not only expands the nasal airway, it also enlarges the nasal pharynx, and it's related to the opening of the, it, it's the PNS. Okay, so another patient with, who had the, uh, the dome, you could see some lateralization of the dental alveolar segment unilaterally. It is you lose control of the segment, of the, the hemi segment, or the hemi maxilla. You could see that the cuts were made, a huge diastema. This moved laterally a little bit. It didn't really help the nasal airway much. This patient had no improvement in nasal airway, no improvement in sleep apnea. Another dome patient that came, that came to see me, you could see that the diastema is created, okay? And look at the expansion pattern. Fracture of the nasal floor on the left side, movement of, basically, this is the lateralization of the, the segment there. The PNS was moved. The patient came in saying, after the, the, my dome, I can't breathe through my nose, and my sleep apnea is worse. My symptoms worse. This is why, okay? This is the expansion pattern from a dome operation. This is the expansion pattern of a dome operation. Because the procedure is so inefficient, you want to overexpand, stretch it out as much as you can to try to improve the airway. This patient, and you expand beyond the physiologic limitation of the system. Therefore, you don't get any bone fill. The space is too large. Okay, this is, unfortunately, he had MMA have further complications, but this is the problem. There's no bone fill and two root canal, compromised teeth. Another patient, you can see that, that when you do a large, every expansion has certain built-in asymmetry, okay? It's not always perfectly symmetric, but this is a dome patient which is over expansion, no improvement in nasal breathing, no improvement in sleep apnea. There you can see that the flaring out of the dental alveolar segment on the right, lateralization of the segment on the left, no, nothing on the, on the, in the nose. And you can see fracture along the right nasal floor. That's the expansion pattern. That's not what we want. Another dome patient, after the dome, he said, I can't, my, my nasal breathing is the same and my sleep apnea is the same. He came to see me. But his, his complaint was that his face doesn't look right. When you expand so widely, you create such asymmetry. Let the, I'll let the orthodontist tell me. When, when you have a 15 millimeter gap, when you want to bring the teeth together, are you going to bring the whole 15 to one side? <laughs> That's, it doesn't work that way mechanically. Okay, another patient, very wide diastema, no improvement in nasal breathing, no improvement in sleep apnea, and the expansion was so wide that his upper lip felt tethered. And this has been demonstrated in the SARPI literature. There you can see how the expansion pattern in the dome. This patient, actually, he was improved. His nasal breathing is improved. And he said his sleep apnea has improved. But look at the expansion from the domes. He was very unhappy because his face is now asymmetric. There you could see before dome, after dome. The bad genioplasty didn't help either, okay? So the intent of the, the dome or the SARPI, really the operation was designed to widen the dental alveolar segment to correct the cross by. When you try to do that, to use that procedure to try to improve the nasal airway, you just overexpand. It causes asymmetry, it compromises the dentition, and it's inefficient. The best way is the pediatric method, the pattern, okay? It's an entire nasal maxer expansion, open up the ANS to PNS. That's the ideal method, and that's how the pediatric expansion works. I'm just gonna go over a few slides. 18 year old. Sleep apnea, whole family has sleep apnea. I, I did this, op this same operation on three of them. You can see that it's a complete skeletal expansion. 
you can see that there's no lateralization of the dental, dental alveolar segment, complete opening of the ANS to PNS. You can see that it's basically complete skeletal expansion, just in, like in the pediatric population. But the key really is, are we lateralizing the nasal wall? That is the key of the operation, okay? Before and after. 40-year-old, they're becoming more and more challenging, right? He, he underwent uh, nasal maxillary expansion. I'm still expanding him, actually. You can see that on a 40-year-old man, it's a pure skeletal expansion, opening of the ANS to PNS. Really, I call it a mid face expansion, okay? And you can see if you are doing the procedure properly, you're going to get bone fill. This was actually just three months out, okay? This is one of the most difficult expansion. 42-year-old, he had a large, he had a palatal tori. I went ahead and expanded him. You can see that it's still a skeletal expansion. Start losing some anchorage a little bit, but still. Pure skeletal expansion. You can see the op lateralization of the nasal sidewall. Some people say, well, what about when patients have severe periodontal disease? 50 year old woman with obstructive sleep apnea syndrome, she was skeletally expanded. There you can see she has severe periodontal disease, significant bone loss. You can see this is a pure skeletal expansion. This is a few months how you can see the bone deposition with lateralization of the nasal wall. So just because you could create a huge diastema, it doesn't mean that you're actually helping the nasal airway. The most efficient way really is like the pediatric pattern opening of the ANS and PNS, which you can improve the nasal airway, as well as nasal pharyngeal airway. So any treatment, the way when I look at it, you want to, does it make sense physiologically, okay? And does it have data supporting it? And more importantly, I want to see it physically. Are the patients coming to me, are they being improved? Not just some pretty literature, you know, some black letters on you know, white, I mean, are these patients, are, am I seeing patients being improved? Last, last case, 22-year-old man, the one that uh, couldn't be expanded with, Mar with MARPI or MSE, skeletal, this is a pure skeletal expansion. There you can see it's much improved. Thank you for attending. Um, I think maybe we'll have one question for, for Dr. Alvey. <laughs> <laughs>